Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I am going to be doing a tutorial that was requested on one of my videos on how to make a desktop background with Adobe Photoshop. And if you're wondering why the bar at the bottom is like the um, old layout, it's because I am using XSplit to record and it reverts it back to the old um, taskbar so it saves frames and memory. So let's hop into our Photoshop here. So what you're going to first, first what you're going to do, like normal, you're going to click new. And you're gonna set the width and height before you know before you know what to set that for you're going to have to get the width and height of your screen so you're gonna right click anywhere on the screen go to screen resolution and it'll tell you right here and the reason I have two screens here is because I'm dual screening here you can see my mouse go off the screen come back on but um it is 1600 by 900 so we go back in our Photoshop new 1600 by 900 and just click enter and make sure it's on transparent at the bottom here it should say transparent and uh, then we're going to choose any background color um i think i'm making one for venom gaming today so i'm going to go with a greenish color i don't really know what he wants but let's hope he likes this so then you're going to press Control shift n and press enter and it should make a new layer then you're going to take the um, marquee tool if you don't see the circular one right click and click elliptical marquee tool and you're just going to drag it from one corner down to the next corner like almost all of my tutorials right click select inverse and then paste a black or fill the corners with black and press control d to um, get rid of the selection next we're going to press filter blur Gaussian blur and about 117 and 118 pixels and you can just click ok so it gives it nice faded out in the corners like official look looks cool so I use it now basically you're gonna put your text in I don't know what I'm gonna use for him Let's look for a cool text uh, maybe this just make it the whole screen so there so you can have uh, extra space just in case and you want to always, if you're making it for your desktop, you want to consider where all your um, icons are going to be. Like here, I have all my icons. I sort of was able to fit all of my stuff on this side. And it kind of worked out. No, oh, not there. So, we're going to put our text about in this area of the screen right here. Because I'm pretty sure he keeps all his stuff on this side. Now, if you want it to automatically put everything in there, just right-click, view, and auto-arrange icons. It'll automatically put the icons there. So if I like take an icon, try to place it over here, it'll like put it back. So um, let's try this out. If you want to be able to color it, I recommend just using white. It's the easiest to um, mess around with. And that looks pretty good so now we're gonna have to you're gonna have to format the text a bit something like that and we're gonna put this right about there so now I'm going to put that layer below the vignette that we made and we're gonna edit the text a bit you can use whatever you're gonna right click uh, I'm starting to get ahead of myself. You're going to right click, go to blending options, and you can use whatever bevel and emboss you want. You can use inner bevel, outer bevel, emboss, pillow emboss, or stroke emboss. What I like to use for my backgrounds, I just like to use the um, emboss. And I set the depth on 150 and size on 7. Now this sort of gives it a look of it that it's popping out of the screen. And then if you want, you can do whatever, you, whatever like looks cool. You can add a stroke, however big you want it. And then we're going to add an inner shadow. And you can do the, like, change the distance, the choke, and the size. So we're going to put this right about there. And then we're going to move down to inner glow. Now, inner glow, when you have inner, inner shadow on, it doesn't really do much. So, 
you have to choose one or the other. So next, satin. I don't really use this feature as much because it just makes the text look just nasty. So then you can use color overlay if you want to change the color. Just make sure you keep it on normal and uh, you can change it to whatever you want. You can change it to blue, anything in this chart, any range in there. So we're gonna get we're going to actually make it red. I should not have turned that off. That red actually looks good. And then I'm going to turn the opacity down a bit and make this red a bit brighter. You know, let's leave the opacity all the way up. There we go. Now, for gradient overlay, I'm gonna keep it on normal. And I usually go with this if I'm making a background. It's a default overlay. It's called neutral density. And you just press OK. Radial 167. And I put it on all the way up. You can't really tell the difference, but it sort of gives it a, um, a glow. Sort of a circular radial glow on there. And um, it just gives it a little touch that most people don't really like add. So it makes it different. Now, I think his item of choice was, um, what was it? I'm not really sure what his item of choice was, so I'm going to leave it blank. I'm going to put just a random item to show you guys what to do if you want to place items in this picture. So let's go on over to here. Let's put a golden apple in. You can resize the golden apple however you want. And you click the move button and press place and we can edit this now if you want you can do a pillow emboss and change it to downward now we can make this look like it's engraved into the picture or we can make it look like it's popping out of the picture so for this it sort of looks like it's engraved into it but this just looks like blocky, more like Minecraft. I'm going to keep it more modernized, make it look like that. And then put the um, the shading on 90 and 40, just like that. It affects everything on screen. I just forgot to do that in the earlier stage. And you might want to mess around with the opacity of the curves. But I like to turn them both up to 100%. And that's about it. All you need to know is how to place items, edit them, and um, do your text. Oh, the background as well. You right click, go to blending options, and if you want to put a pattern on the background, make sure you put it on overlay. And, oh, that looks pretty nice. I'm going to have to turn that opacity down a little bit. That looks good right there. Ooh there so you can do whatever you want with this text the possibilities are limitless if I want I could do a shadow a drop shadow like that however you want guys you can experiment tell me what you find uh, tweet me some pics if you want to show me what you've come up with so that's about it for this video everyone if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful remember to slap that like button with a raw fish and I will see you all in the next video. 